welcome back to the channel. So we're gonna jump in the booth this morning, actually, and uh, start taping on this thing. So here's our little Falcon project. I'll flip the uh, camera around exactly and show y'all what we got. Uh, but we're gonna paint this thing. It's going base coat, clear coat. So it's going Oxford white. I gotta go run to the paint store this afternoon and grab the paint. Hoping I go ahead and shoot this whole shell this afternoon. It's early, it's about lunchtime, 11 o'clock. Um, and I'm hoping I can bang this thing right out. Uh, the customer has already uh, did all the prep work on this. Uh, let me flip the camera around and I'll show you what he's um, done. So he has done his black. He has painted from here, Ford, engine bay and everything. So all that's done. And we are keeping this from here, Ford. And then we are painting from this line that way and from the this up. So we're not touching any of this at all. He wants to preserve all of this in here because this is exactly, he said, how it was from the factory, is that all of that color was in there. I don't know exactly what's going on, but that's exactly how he said it was when he got it. And that's the original that he doesn't want to, um, you know, change or switch up. He wants all this writing left on here and everything. So we'll be painting again from here up. We'll back tape this and go that way. So we'll keep that hid behind the fender is all original. Um, he is coming here and all your green primer is normally etching primer, normally. Um, you know, there's some mixtures of gray primers and stuff. I'm hoping none of this stuff lifts. Um, that's the chance that you take. Uh, you can see a lot of um, uh, grinding marks, okay, in here. So this really needed a 2K primer uh, to go over it to get rid of all of this. This is really um, rough. You know, it's slick, it's really freaking smooth, um, you know, because he's wet sanding it. He's wet sanding everything. But this is the level that he's brought it to. This is, I've been hired to paint, not to do body work. So he's got this to the level that he wants this at. And um, he did all the prep work. So everything's been sanded, everything's been scotch brighted. I don't have to do anything but tape and shoot it. Um, he has come inside of it, the trunk. I mean, the trunk is freaking really clean. I mean, everything has been, you know, touched. Like I said, I mean, this thing is just... It's freaking amazing. It's pretty cool. So I think it's going to be a pretty cool project. Uh, we won't be painting the arms. That stays the splatter paint. You know, we'll be back taping this and then painting all of this. But just kind of wanted to show you, go over this with y'all before um, we actually paint it. So you can kind of see this is a project that was done in a gentleman's garage. I'm, I'm pretty sure I feel confident that this is all rattle can primer. Um, kind of worries me. I'm going to take my time putting it on there because some of this stuff can lift. You know, especially where you have cut throughs like this. This is dangerous. But this is something y'all can do, man. Look at the freaking exhaust tips. All clean and redone. I haven't really been underneath it. But, um, yeah, this is exactly, exactly the level that y'all be doing in your garage, man. So, hopefully, y'all find this interesting. And I'll kind of show you how we handle a job like this. Um, we are coming in here. We're going to be painting up to here. He's took the chrome trim out. We're going to tape everything you see that's left is going to get taped. Um, he's already done all of the black in here and all the chrome. So all of this is going to get taped up. Um, we don't have to do none of this in here. Um, we just have to, you know, obviously go door jams out. So we're going to tape all of that. We're going to do all of these door jams in here. We're going to tape up our strikers same thing i've done on my car i did not mess with my strikers because i didn't want to mess the adjustment up and we're painting it with the doors on the car so that's another cool um, piece of the puzzle to this job that you'll get to see so he's already done all the primer work in here and all i'm literally doing is just blasting what paint i can get up in there um, a lot of times the best way to do that is to focus on your jam right here with paint and then you know kind of close your door a little we'll just be pushing it to like that and then come in here and get the inside of the door this way a lot of people don't think about that so you got to have your fender off um over here in this door jam we will be taping uh let's see here i think it's the vin plate that's in this one which is the same thing i've done in my car is i actually taped all of my plates that are in the car and actually clear coated over mine uh, so the original plates are there so we're gonna we're gonna just tape it we're not gonna clear coat over his we're gonna tape this up um, but we're gonna keep all of that original and not touch not touch or remove any of that stuff. So I'm gonna take lunch and then we're gonna get this thing taped up. We're gonna do a lot of back taping and I'll kind of show y'all how I tape this thing. Uh, we're not gonna do a huge how-to on this car, but I'm gonna touch on the different steps in case you're doing one of these in your garage. So uh, let's go grab a bite, eat, and then we'll get it taping.
All right, so we got everything taped up and we're ready to drop our plastic, but I just wanted to go over this with y'all real fast in case you're doing your own project. And uh, taping can be honestly kind of confusing whenever you don't do this for a living. And you might think, well, how in the world do I get all of this covered up and get tape when I need to paint the face of this? Well, you back tape. So all of this is back taped. It's where you're taping on the back side of the panel um, that you're painting. So literally, most of this car is all back taped right now. Um, so all of your jams are back taped, meaning your tape is stuck on the inside because we want to paint from here out. Now we are going to put a piece of uh, little tape over this face tape over this wire um, after we have it all uh, masked off. It's just I want to back tape first and then I'll face tape over that wire. Um, when you get in here, it gets a little tricky. You're back taped, no taped, face taped. So here's why. And then you're actually gonna back tape and face tape this. So you back tape right here. We're gonna drop our plastic and stick our plastic in here like this. So it's gonna stick to this, 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 all of this. Okay, it's gonna stick all around, all the way around the vehicle. It's gonna stick like that. We're gonna cut these panels out, peel this off. Um, you can't back tape to something that's a face and a face. Obviously you have to have a lip to back tape. So we back taped here so we can get our plastic stuck. But then after our plastic is stuck on it, we will come and I'll show you, we will face tape this to protect the chrome. Um, you know, you can face tape first and roll it in, then back tape, but I'd rather do it like this. That way when I face tape, I can overlap onto this and I can actually uh, get a better seal there. Now this right here, when you come up in here, you can't, this is spray paint. So this is all metal spray paint. There's um, an edge right here, but you can't get nothing behind it. This is all one piece. I don't know if this dash comes out of this car, honestly. I don't even see how it would, um, but I, I don't even see how this dash would come out of this car. But who knows? I don't know nothing about these Falcons. It actually looks like it goes in, so it looks like this is overlapped onto metal. It's just a really clean overlap. Anyway, there's no lip that you can back tape. So this is going to have to go from back tape and then face tape. So we will cut our plastic rough right here. And then we will face tape to our black and follow his line. Now I'm going to probably go ahead here in a second and run a piece of half inch so that my line is perfect. And that way it's easier to do. And then I can face tape, um, face tape to that. But when you come around here, the doors we'll do separate. We're just going to go ahead and drop plastic, get the shell done. And then I'm going to move on to my doors um, because I'll have some plastic off my quarters and stuff like that. That sometimes I can just move and transfer over here like this to help mask this off or pull another piece. But that's the reason why I waited on the doors. Uh, again, we're not painting none of this. So this is back taped, back taped because there's all lips. And then we switch back to face taping where we will drop our plastic like this. And then we will tape our plastic to our tape like this. The same thing with a windshield. Obviously, you just put your plastic on there tape it. And I'll show you all this real fast just in case you're new. Uh, I have went over this in a very in-depth um, in previous videos if you want to look back at a lot of painting stuff on here. Um, but this is door jams the exact same way. Um, that's pretty much how it's done. Trunk lid, all in, or the trunk openings all back taped. But you have to go in here. And you have to back tape your tail lights. So you have to go on the inside and you have to back tape all of your trim holes. So everywhere that paint could blow through, um, you have to back tape and make sure that no paint blows through. That includes if you're in my situation and the customer has sent this vehicle over without windshield wipers in it, you have to back tape the windshield wipers. Meaning I had to stick my hands way up underneath the dash and get a piece of tape from the bottom side so that paint doesn't float into his car on the inside and get overspray all over his dash and doors. Now, how you do back tape, just in case for some reason you still are not comprehending this, um, it's not because you're stupid or anything, it's just you're new. I mean, I didn't at first. I have a real hard time comprehending stuff. Um, so we don't wanna paint this right here. We just wanna paint from this line up. So this would be back tape. Take your piece of pet, uh, Ah, take you a piece of tape, stick it on the back side. There you go. That's how you back tape. Now, of course, your back side has to be clean or decently clean so the tape will stick, but that's how that will be. We'll stick to the back side of all of this, and that way when we drop our plastic, we can cut all this out. Another really nice touch if you want to go the extra mile that we actually did on Randy's Fox body to keep overspray off of his transmission was we, uh, since it was race cars, we actually back taped his rockers and then dropped plastic down to the floor. Um, also, you can come in here and back tape your wheel wells. Um, and then that way, you know, everything is sealed off and you don't get overspray up inside your wheel wells. On a car like this, um, 
the I'm pretty sure the customer is not worried about a little overspray up inside the wheel wells. He can just rattle can that later if he wants. And I'm sure that the bottom side of this car is not uh, have some really nice, you know, three, four, five thousand dollar transmission in it. Um, so we're not going to worry about um, back taping the rockers and all that. We very rarely do that. Sometimes we do it on pickup trucks. Um, you know, if it's if there's going to be a lot of overspray and a lot of paint moving around underneath it. But on this one, we're going to do traditional tire covers over it and just rock and roll. Uh, we're not going to purposely blast any paint all over stuff, you know, on the bottom side. But we're just going to rock and roll as a normal situation being this job was priced as a normal situation kind of job if that makes sense to y'all it's not anything over the top sometimes you run into situations like this um i said i was going to back tape all this but this is actually all primer gray so what i did was just paper up the tailpipes and um i'm actually just gonna let that overspray white instead of taping it off because i don't know if the customer wanted that white or not i don't think he cares but since there is primer over it we're just gonna rock and roll and just let it overspray um onto it instead of taping it off that, that kind of didn't make sense since there's primer there you know we'd be better to put some white paint on it all right so we got it all taped up last time we did the uh blue chicago grudge car if you go look at that playlist um, I went over in extreme detail uh, all of the steps to painting a car. So that's an excellent playlist on my channel for anybody that's just starting out. Let's look for the blue Fox body. It's called the Chicago Grudge Car. It's a grudge car that we painted, and uh, we did the whole thing over. So there's a lot of info. Uh, in that one, I criticized the use of paper, and I uh, got in trouble in the comment section. Um, uh, there's a time and place for paper. Uh, a lot of times you use plastic. Plastic works great, so if you don't know anything about uh, painting cars and it's your first time seeing a video uh, don't use newspaper it has tiny holes in it um, preferably don't uh, mask your whole car in paper uh, it takes a lot longer than dropping plastic there's nothing wrong with paper it's just this method is way faster using plastic um, the doors technically should have been done in plastic uh, but i already committed to running the outside in paper and folding it over and then when i realized and i thought about it i was like man this is going to take one two three pieces i was already too deep in that door and I just said, screw it, and went with it. So I kind of kicked myself in the butt on this. Uh, on the doors, they should have been plastic, but I hated to pull out a piece of uh, a roll of plastic or a section of plastic and cut it, but that's what I should have did. Would have been a lot faster than that freaking paper. Um, but that's what it should look like when your whole car is masked up. Everything's back taped. Uh, everything's good to go. Um, the face taping on the chrome, like I talked about. Uh, the face taping on the wires down here, like we talked about. Okay, everything is underneath the door correctly okay so all the edges are done it's not just sloppy uh chunked around the edges all of your edges i actually cheated mine in a touch farther to the holes so the clip holes are right here I always go to the outside of my clip hole because it's guaranteed to cover um, so his primer lines here i don't trust it i went to the clip hole uh, his black goes to here i don't trust it i stepped it back that way i can make sure my white covers everything if he needs to add black somewhere for some reason later he can, but for the most part, I followed his black. I just did not do this funkiness right here. You know, I just went connected dots straight down. So, um, yeah, that's how your project should look. We've got all of our latches taped up. Everything's back taped. Our hinges are wrapped up with plastic. Like I said, we left the bottom off. We you know, covered the tailpipes in paper. We've got our tire covers over them. Um, you can get these from Harbor Freight. If you're not familiar with it, it's just called painting tire covers. You can also get them off Amazon and all that stuff. But everything's ready to rock and roll. We ran out of time. Sorry, it's 4 o'clock. I do not have this paint. I got to go get it, like I said. Um, it took a little bit longer to tape than I thought. So this is going to be a, a tomorrow project. But this will sit in the booth overnight. We'll come in in the morning. I'll go get the paint. I'll get some heat rolling in here, get this metal up to the temperature I want. Preferably, I want this metal around 70 degrees. Um, that's going to make for the best outcome for the paint to go on to warm metal and i want my paint about 70 degrees uh in a perfect world that's what temperature you want it at but it always don't work like that so we'll jump back on this tomorrow and finish this thing out wiped our whole car down with wax and grease remover so this is what i've used but i just want to note how bad the uh prep work is on this car now we did not do the prep work like i said i took this in as already finished look at the that's like Pretty sure this wire wheel or flat wheel from where somebody was grinding the metal. Lay it up. So I'm very curious how 
this is going to turn out afterwards. Thank the Lord it is going white. And if it wasn't for that, I'd say uh, it would be in big trouble. But again, I was not hired to do the prep work on this car. I did not prep this car. Took it in, wiped it down with wax and grease remover, and I'm shooting it. That's it. That's all I was paid to do. So let's rock and roll. Here's something you don't see very often. This is unshook paint. You can see this is all clear in the top of it. Until it gets down to your actual colors. Look at that. How cool does that look? Alright, so this is one coat of silver and the only reason why I'm dropping silver is because it's what I have. Normally I use white VAP seal, uh, which is a white sealer, but my paint supplier is currently out of that. So I'm having to take some free stuff that I have left over. I had a whole gallon of this uh, silver and so I'm using it as a drop coat because silver is the um, next best thing to white if you're painting white over top. The problem with this is you got to get it all the same shade. So you had like all this was white, and then this was, you know, different colors, and that was dark green, and the doors are mixed between gray and green. And then this panel over here, like you can see, is a mixture of gray primer and then green primer. And so if you don't get all of your foundation the same color first, then everywhere that there's green, it's gonna be darker underneath the white. So we wanna get everything one equal color, which in our situation is gonna be silver this morning. We wanna get everything silver, then we can lay our white over top of our silver. That way our white is all the same shade. Now we have to do this to every single part on this car now. Now that I have decided to put silver down, it needs a bright silver as a drop coat. You could probably get away with just doing white if you had to do a repair in the future, but you really need to stick with a dark silver. So I will be noting on the paper work with the receipt with this car that a bright silver was dropped first before the white went over it. So let me keep on getting it, slowly building up some layers of silver until we get full coverage and the whole car is silver and then we'll go to our white. You can see the silver shows bad, all of the imperfections. And it, hopefully when we get done with the white, hopefully it'll look good. All right, so we've got our white base coat laid down. I took lunch, let it dry out. Um, you don't have to. Normally I literally roll clear right over top of it. Uh, normally I give it like five minutes max, uh, normally like three, but whatever your manufacturer says on your product, get your data sheet, read your data sheet, read all the technical stuff and follow instructions for your product. Um, I'm going to go make some clear up. We're going to get this thing cleared. Um, after we get this rolling shell done, the hood's up there. We got to knock the hood out because it's easier for transport if we bolt it back to the car for the gentleman. That way he doesn't have to worry about scratching the bottom or the top. It's bolted back in place. And then we're going to go ahead and draw on half of the invoice on this job. So we're going to pull 1500 That way half of it's paid for. Material bill this morning was $450 on this job. So um, we'll be in a positive. And then when we finish out the rest of it, uh, we will collect our last 1500 bucks. Let's go make some clear. All right, so we are going to clear coat this car with our Omni. 270 production clear now it is colder outside so you should probably be using a fast hardener but i use slow on everything so i use slow everything year round i'm running the heater and um, i like to keep the shop temperature up to you know high 60s uh, 70 if possible but with the booth running it doesn't always work uh, reducer i'm using this is the grow uh, brand reducer i'm using this is just the best bang for the buck was local to me and then we're going to hit this with accelerator so MX195. Now a lot of people say this makes no sense right here doing these together and it doesn't. It honestly doesn't make no sense. Um, so accelerating speeds up your hardener on how fast it dries. So you'd say, well, why wouldn't you just buy medium or fast speed hardener? Here's why, because North Carolina, Wilmington, the weather changes so much that tomorrow I might not need fast or medium. I might need just straight slow with no accelerator. So I like to just always buy slow, keep this consistent year round, and then alter my slow 
with this. Either way, if you have to, if you, you normally stock slow, then you'd have to buy fast over here. So you'd have two products. We still have two products. You get what I'm saying? Price is pretty much the same. So it's not, it's not a deal of price. I'd rather just alter and adjust with my accelerator. Now I'm only accelerating this to try to help um, lower the chances of runs in this one. Um, I want to get this thing wet, you know, where it has a good buildup, but I don't want runs in it because of what I'm charging. I don't, I, I charged, I sold this job straight out the gun and I charged um, not enough to cut a buff. So if I don't do this straight out the, the gun, then I'm technically making less and less money because it's more time. So I'm just hoping that the accelerator just help kicks it off a little bit faster than normal and that will help hopefully not get no runs now it's just white so i don't have to wet this thing out as wet as like a black or something you know where it make it wet out like glass because it's white and you're really not going to see um much in it anyway white pretty much looks good no matter what uh you see how bad the prep work was so i'm definitely going to show you all this car in the sun afterwards and you'll notice that it's, it's probably going to look good no matter what just because of it being white um, but yeah, my, my whole goal, my mindset going in today is speed and not having a cut and buff. So anything we can do to lower our chances of runs. Normally I spray without runs, but I am bouncing back and forth between Omni 270, Vitec clear, Norbin clear. And when you start switching up a bunch of clears, when you're painting, um, if you don't do it a lot every day, some people paint five to 10 cars a day. I don't, um, Sometimes you start running stuff because of the weight of the different products. One's more watery than the other. And when you're switching, it takes getting used to. I'm switching guns. So today I'm spraying my my Awada Supernova, where I've been spraying with 100% Harbor Freight gun um, for the past like month, month and a half. So today's actually the first day back on Awada in a long time, or a pretty long time. So um, yeah, that's how mistakes happen. So we're just gonna shoot for no mistakes. Hopefully this thing goes smooth. Let's roll. All right, so we got this thing done. A couple things I'm already seeing is whoever had done this before, I don't think the gentleman that owns the car actually did the body work. I think what he did was he purchased it in this primer state, and I think that he did a bunch of wet sanding on it, which was um, not good necessarily because it needed a higher grit than wet sanding, and it also needed more primer on it. And I, you know, you can't really tell that until you start wiping it down um you know and you actually have it you know ready to paint now we could have i guess in theory wiped it before and checked behind it but it just when you're hired to just paint something you're normally not hired for your like checking over other people's work like you're here just to paint it and that's it so um you can see discoloration if the camera will catch it uh right here if the camera is showing up the orangey pinkish um hue so what this is, is actually is bleed back through. It's where um, there wasn't a 2K primer to lock all the old paint down. So it's, it's bleeding through. Um, any type of sealer you used, in my opinion, would not uh, stop that. That needs really a 2K primer, something with a hardener in it. Sealers don't have hardeners in them. They're just 1K uh, products, most of them, all the ones I use at least. Uh, so you need something with a hardener in it which would be a 2K primer to really lock the old stuff down. You see, when we started this car, there were so many uh, different, this product here, this product here, old paint here. And it was just, you know, not a good foundation to paint on top of. Um, same things happening over here. I can see it. There's a little bit here and here. I don't think the camera's gonna pick it up. Maybe right there. If you can see right there and right there. I don't know how it's gonna look on TV by the time this video is edited. Um, it's hard to see. You're probably not gonna see it outside in the sun because the white's gonna be so bright. But um, yeah, that's from not you know having a good foundation to start on top of. I mean, he would have had to spend for us to block this. Probably another two grand with us for us to two K prime this and you know block it all out. We had some wrinkle up situation going on here. Uh, some old product, just everything didn't like whatever was in there. Um, pretty sure that something screws down right here. A door trim piece so i'm hoping they're pretty sure that that should be okay and there shouldn't be an issue um, all the jams turned out good the doors we don't have no runs nothing to cut or buff out of it everything looks good um is it 
pretty big, decently piece of trash up there. That will cut and buff out if somebody wanted to. I'm not doing it. I told him there will be trash in this job. Let's see here. No runs on this panel. You can just see all of the, um, all that hatchy choppiness in it. Um, it looks worse. The camera's not picking it up great. Um, that's all them wire, uh, like dig marks that I showed you before we painted it. That's all them hooks like this from where somebody I think took a flat wheel. And so it's where they like come, you know, with flat wheeling like this and cutting into it. It's all these hatch marks. Um, if somebody cut and buffed the top of that door, you would get at least 75% of that out of it. Uh, because I did put a little bit extra on that door. So there's three coats of clear over this door. Um, two coats of our silver, or our silver drop coat and um, two coats of white and then three coats of clear. So you have enough clear on here to do a light cut and buff. This doesn't need a heavy cut and buff. If anything, it needs 2,500 grit, wet sanded down and buffed out. That would leave you with about two and a half, two and three quarters uh, um, coats of clear, probably two and a half. Um, that, that's, that's plenty on a car like this. This car is probably gonna stay in the garage a lot of its life. You know, so it's not gonna see a ton of sun. Um, we could have pounded four coats on it, but then when you pound four coats on it, now you need to start charging the customer for a four coat level job. Uh, three coats of clear is perfectly acceptable for any normal average vehicle. If we do insurance work uh, on your 2022 Silverado, whatever, it gets three coats of clear. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the average from what I've always done. Um, that's gonna be a wrap on this shell. We're gonna get this hood painted. And uh, we actually have to get that hood, you know, installed before this thing gets out of here. So uh, on to the next. You got that side, right? Yeah, you're good. Hold on a second. Straight back. Don't turn the wheels. No, you're good. Uh, I want it inside. Yeah, I did. I put them down in the center. <laughs> 